And, you know, in technical terms, a famine requires three things. A sustained, severe lack of access to food. And that has been the case in, in really all of Gaza, going back at least as far as December. The second is high levels of child malnutrition. And that has certainly been surpassed in the north. We're seeing a lot of that in the south as well. The third threshold is highly elevated mortality as a result of the famine and disease. Those things are sequential. Disease kills at least as many people, if not more, than outright starvation because of the weakening of the immune systems that occurs with sustained malnutrition. Hence, a famine response is also really important, why access is so important. It's not just a matter of dumping food parcels off the backs of trucks and the job is done. Once people reach an advanced state of malnutrition, they need specialized treatment and they need access to robust health treatment. And of course, the health system right now is shattered. And, and then of course, fuel underpins all of that. So if fuel runs out, and fuel is generally comes in on an ongoing flow at sort of a minimal level just to keep minimum operations running. When that minimal level stops very rapidly, what that means is you lose clean water because the water pumping and the water purification can't run. You lose hospital capacity because they can't keep the lights on. You lose food because the bakeries can't operate and you lose aid distribution because humanitarian organizations can't move.